What's up guys, Nash here. Today we are going to talk about pad technicals. So this is the second video in our um, set of videos, which I called uh, the superstars of muscle works. So um, as I said, I'm going to talk about people that uh, I've uh, met personally, that people that I know, people that I used to train with, um, uh, exchange experience in muscle works. So what, what you're going to get from me is like first hand information. All I've seen a lot of uh, <clears throat> internet um, stories about people like Brian Buchanan, Patrick Nichols and others. Uh, well, not necessarily they're all 100% true, but from me, you're going to get that information first hand. So Patrick Nichols is uh, <clears throat> obviously a very famous uh, bodybuilder who, who is originally from Barbados, but he came to London and uh, <clears throat> obviously ended up in Muscle Works. I met Patrick in 1993 and I knew um, about Patrick from bodybuilding magazines. I knew uh, he was already established competitor because he competed in Nava and Waba in uh, in the period from 1979 till 1983, he competed uh, six times in Naba uh, and Waba, and he uh, always finished in, in top three or top six. So in 1985, 1988 and 1989, he moved to IFBB, and he did uh, three Grand Prix, finishing respectively fifth, second and third. Uh, in uh, <clears throat> Actually, uh, in uh, 1991, he turned professional and uh, in 91, he competed in two Grand Prix, got third and fourth place. Uh, in 1992, he competed again, didn't place that high. In 1994, three Grand Prix finished uh, third, fifth and seventh. And then in 1995, two Grand Prix, ninth and eighth. 1995 again, Masters Olympia finished third. That year, uh, Robbie Robinson finished second, and uh, Patrick finished, and uh, Sonny Schmidt won that Masters in 1995. And uh, his last show was in 1998 when Patrick competed in Masters, Arnold, Arnold Classic Masters, and finished fifth. So, as I said to you, I, I knew about him um, from magazines. He was already established uh, competitive bodybuilder, top class, competing in Naba and Baba, and as I said, in the 1991 turn pro. 1993, I came to London, and then, uh, <clears throat> funny enough, I was looking for somebody to share a flat. So, uh, people said, oh, uh, you should speak to Patrick, because Patrick is looking for a flatmate. I said, which Patrick? They said, Patrick Nichols. You know Patrick Nichols? He said, well, I know Patrick Nichols, but I just, uh, I couldn't believe that I'm going to share the flat with, with Patrick. And actually, he came to the gym. He was very friendly. He, he's, he's an amazing character, always smiling, always uh, uh, very talkative, very friendly. So we ended up sharing the flat for some six months in City View building in Baton Green High Road. That was like maybe five minutes walk from the gym, a perfect place for, for you know, devoted bodybuilders. So in those six months, I, I really learned a lot from Patrick. Uh, we trained together, we, we cooked together, we're doing shopping together. Um, Patrick was, uh, what I learned from him actually was... Uh, the main thing was uh, to know how to relax. So he said to me, bodybuilding is not just training. Bodybuilding is more uh, everything else which is outside the gym. So the way you live, the way that you are <clears throat> organizing your day, you need to rest a lot, you need to eat, you need to eat regularly. Uh, also, you need to cook. Patrick was a professional cook, so he said, yeah, I will be cooking, you just don't worry about anything. And uh, it was an unforgettable uh, time with him sharing that flat in City View. Now, uh, <clears throat> when it comes to training, Patrick didn't train with very heavy weights. His weights were rather medium, but he was more concentrated on uh, perfect form. He 
he didn't like cheating, so he would train relatively slowly and uh, every set would be a proper 30 to 40 seconds uh, time under tension. Um, you, would, you would see Patrick doing bicep curls, for example, very, very slowly and uh, his biceps would literally uh, pop, they would, they would pop out. Um, the veins will be popping out and you can see the, the muscles pumping and growing during the set. So there is nothing like cheating. Uh, uh, when it comes to chest movements, back movements, uh, very, very concentrated, lots of isolating movements, everything focused on the muscle, full contraction, full extension. He was really very careful about training, maybe because he always had lower back problems, so he had to be careful not to injure his lower back. This is why he didn't do squats, he didn't like bent over rowing, so everything else, yes, but uh, maybe because of that he, he actually uh, uh, paid really a lot of attention to perfect form. Uh, he didn't like cheating, so when, when he would see somebody in the gym doing, you know, massive cheating with super heavy weights, he would just say, well, these guys are just going to injure themselves. This is not how training should be. Uh, Patrick trained every muscle once a week. Uh, in the off season, it would be four times a week. And he said, uh, because the training was very intense, when I say intense, it wasn't because the, the, the weights were super heavy, but because the intensity of exercise, time and tension was super intense. And he would say it's very important that you recover fully before you enter the gym again. So four times per week um, in the off-season and then before the show, he would go five, sometimes six. Only once a day, he wouldn't do anything twice a day. And he didn't do any cardio because Patrick had extremely fast metabolism <clears throat> he was never fat even in the off season he had problems actually uh, getting bigger i mean not that he was small but he wanted to get bigger and for that reason for that purpose he would eat he would eat a lot so uh patrick uh, patrick was very very punctual about food in the off season there will be more carbohydrates and more fat uh still lots of protein uh, for example, his breakfast would be four or five scrambled eggs and uh, a few pieces of toast with butter. And then he would have a porridge after that with some raisins and uh, cinnamon. So that would be breakfast. Then the, the next uh, thing, we would go to the gym around 11. And uh, after the workout, he would have a massive protein shake. He would prepare the protein shake himself. Obviously, protein powder and everything else that he could have put his hands on. Creatine, glutamine, amino acids, everything. Sometimes we pop in an egg, a bit of honey, uh, soya milk or low-fat milk and stuff like that. And you would make kind of a banana inside. So that shake wouldn't be like, we, we, we know shakes now, just way in water. It would be like a proper meal. Um, then we go home, <clears throat> a couple of hours later, he would cook usually chicken, chicken, rice and sweet corn. That was his favorite. Uh, there'll be some salad as well on the side, but the rice and sweet corn were the, the favorite carb sources for Patrick. I remember he would cook a lot of rice and he would keep it uh, also pasta and he would keep it in the fridge in a big plastic containers. And uh, for that reason, we always had that food ready there. Uh, sometimes even chicken would be cooked uh, and left in the fridge. So, you know, you just walk in and you put it in the microwave. So you have that food immediately. <clears throat> the dinner would be something similar. Maybe some red meat, again, uh, rice, brown rice, white rice. He would mix them sometimes, but always sweet corn with that. And uh, Patrick had uh, three to four big meals a day. Before the show, the diet would change and uh, Patrick would start cutting fat first and then carbohydrates. Protein would go up. Training would be a bit longer with uh, shorter rest between the sets. And uh, he never had problems getting in shape. Within a few weeks, Patrick would be like already ripped. Give him six to eight weeks and he would be really shredded. He, <clears throat> I've seen him on a couple of uh, Grand Prix in, in, in Britain, in UK. Uh, he competed in, uh, in, in the most difficult uh, uh, times when people like uh, 
Kevin LeBron, Flex Villa, Dorian Yates, Paul Dille, Nasser El Sombati, they will come. And obviously um, he had to he had to try to fight with those guys on the stage. It was it was really really difficult. But uh, Patrick was somebody everybody was uh, looking at in muscle at muscle works. Um, it was uh, without a doubt one of the best bodybuilders that came out of muscle works. And uh, apart from that, not just a great great bodybuilder, but also a great guy, very friendly, always positive. Uh, always trying to eliminate all negative thoughts around him or people, just uh, trying to stay in that in that bubble of positivity with a smile on his face. This is how I know Patrick. And uh, I hope he's watching this video. He will probably have something else to put this in, into this video, but uh, this is what I remember. So uh, I hope uh, <clears throat> you got uh, you got a picture of Patrick Nichols uh, and uh, another superstar of Muscleworks. So if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, also, I will uh, see you in the next video in which I will be talking about Ian Bodley, another professional bodybuilder who came from uh, Muscleworks. So until then, take care and uh, I'll be seeing you soon.